Hello and welcome to an episode of Historically Marked. I am Jason and this is a Famous Graves edition. I am in rural Missouri at Dry Fork Baptist Church and behind it is a cemetery. And I'm pretty much out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, when I say rural, I definitely mean it. I mean, like, I'm in between so many small towns or unincorporated places, but I am not too far in between Jefferson City and Columbia and not too far from Fulton either. But I am just outside Dry Fork Baptist Church and behind it is a cemetery. And buried there is a famous singer who hit number one in 1960 on the Billboard High 100 chart. We shall see his grave and I'll tell you the story about him. Here we go. All right, so here is Dry Fork Cemetery. There are over 800 interments here. And Mark Denning, as well as his sister Jean, are the famous interments buried here. So I'm gonna go ahead and crawl over this real quick. There's fence, but I believe it's locked, but anybody could just climb over that fence. So in the early 1960s, there was a fad going on on the Billboard pop charts. Some of those hit songs that were hitting the charts. You had Leader of the Pack, Last Kiss by J. Frank Wilson, Tell Laura I Love Her, and then you had Teen Angel by Mark Denning. And that was supposedly the one that ushered them all in. Mark Denning was born Max Edward Denning, and he came from a musical family. In fact, his nephew, Dean Denning, has been a longtime member of the 90s alternative band Toad the Wet Sprocket. Three of his sisters formed a group during the 1940s known as the Denning Sisters. And one of them is Jean, who is also buried here. Mark Denning was the youngest of nine children. He was born in Oklahoma and was raised on a farm just outside Nashville, Tennessee. During the 1940s, again, three of his siblings, Jean, Ginger, and Lou, formed the popular vocal trio, the Denning Sisters. And at age 17, Mark decided to follow them into show business. He would, however, be drafted after high school, but shortly after, he became a civilian again, and this time trying his hand back in show business. So thanks to a Nashville publisher, Wesley Rose, Denning landed a contract with MGM Records in 1957. But his attempts at launching a career as a country singer fizzled. But it wasn't until 1959, at a family gathering for the Denning family, his sister Jean had penned a song called Teen Angel. And Mark had heard the song while he was eating, um, reportedly, and he kind of paused and said, you know, that's, that seems like a really good song. I mean, I wasn't too crazy about it at first, but who knows? But I can record it anyway. And so he agreed to do it on a small budget, but the song ended up taking off like wildfire as it went spread from radio station to radio station and people were wanting to buy copies of it. It was a ballad about a girl who was killed by a train while trying to retrieve her boyfriend's ring. Teen Angel was not standard pop radio fare at the time. In England, it was banned by the BBC as being too morbid. But nonetheless, it struck a nerve with American audiences and it had risen to number one spot in 1960 on the Billboard Hot 100. But despite the song's success, the song was still banned by some pop radio stations. But it, nevertheless, it would spawn the teenage tragedy subgenre that produced several more classic songs. And uh, <laughs> I'm not really quite sure why it was a popular subgenre. I mean, again, like you had songs like Lear the Pack, you had Last Kiss. There was even a song that didn't even break the chart called the water was red and then i think i think running bear was also about a death as well but dinning never repeated his success in 1961 he recorded a song called what will my mary say which would become a big hit for johnny mathis two years after one of dinning's last hits was a novelty song top 40 news weather and sports which hit number 80 on the hot 100 the song was about what happens when a teenager falls asleep listening to the radio while doing homework and creeping out his classmates. Denning cut three more singles for MGM, and unfortunately none of them 
made the top 40. So he eventually settled into performing at small clubs, but also very unfortunate was he was struggling with alcoholism and some club owners refused to book him as a result. But in 1986, he was 52 years old. He was driving home from a gig in Jefferson City and that was where he died of a heart attack. And this right here is his final resting place. And I'm not really sure why he is buried here, but the last line that I wrote in Jefferson City, I am under the impression that him and his family or his sisters lived here around this area. Jeff City is about maybe 20 miles south from where I'm standing. But this right here is where Mark Denning rests in peace from August 17th, 1933 to March 22nd, 1986. And down below here, Teen Angel, answer me please. He sang his way into heaven. And unfortunately, there are some cobwebs. I do not know where his sister Jean is buried. Um, I looked on findagrave.com, but I was not able to find a picture. So unfortunately, that did not help because she was married twice. And I don't know if she was buried under her married name or her maiden name. That's another mystery. But there are a lot of X in the music world that are very, very popular that never got to go to number one on Billboard Hot 100. And Max or Mark Denning. <laughs> I'm glad they include his stage name and his real name on this one. But may he rest in peace. Again, this is his final resting place. And he did enjoy a little bit success later in life. I mean, like 10 years, well, actually 14 years after the song was a hit when it was featured on American Graffiti soundtrack. I'm going to go ahead and look at the back here and nothing but his name. All right, thanks so much for tuning into this episode of Historically Mart. I am Jason, just a few steps away from the final resting place of singer Mark Denning. I am Jason outside Dry Fork Baptist Church and inside the cemetery. Sign off.